Hello, my name is Samuel Chula, and today for my art talk, I will be talking about the painting Kindred Spirits by Asher B. Durant. I chose to talk about this piece of art due to its use of realism to provoke awe-inspiring feelings of nature to connect it to the divine. Also, its flawless use of idealism really stuck out to me when looking at this piece, which is actually very new to the artist of Kindred Spirits, which really interested me. Historical and Cultural Context 19th century artists in the United States turned from the tradition of portraiture to landscape and genre painting. The development of railways from the 1830s to 1860s across America allowed easy transportation between the East and West, enabling citizens to be able to see the North American nature more easily. The railways uh, also led to expansion, implying exploration to fulfill the country's destiny, called Manifest Destiny. Also was, uh, prevalent in the times was Transcendentalism, which is basically the 19th century concept that humans are able to connect to the divine by means of nature. The Hudson River School in the 19th century, painters of landscapes that were intended to glorify nature were known collectively as the Hudson River School. Painters from this school were influenced by U.S. transcendentalist writers such as Thoreau, Whitman, and Emerson. Painters of the school depict the Hudson River Valley and the surrounding areas, such as the Catskill Mountains. Thomas Cole is regarded as the founder of this school, combining the effect of grandeur with an accurate rendering of detail based on close observation. Asher B. Durand began his career as an engraver in Maplewood, New Jersey. He was commissioned by art patron Lumen Reed in 1835 to become a full-time painter. He became close friends with Thomas Cole because of their love for landscape, nature paintings, and they ventured out on many excursions together. Cole painted more grand paintings while Durand took the more pastoral, quaint approach. Kindred spirits marked a turning point in Durand's career by remaining realistic in style but also adding influences of idealism. Here, a work by Thomas Cole, a view from Mount Holyoke, Northampton, Massachusetts after a thunderstorm. You can see the wide-sweeping landscape and the use of lighting that was prevalent in the style of the Hudson River School. Here in the Beaches by Asher B. Durand, it's a vertical painting which is typical of Durand, also the use of intricate detail, lighting, and the more pastoral and bucolic uh, approach rather than uh, Cole's works. It is not as vast as Cole's works, but still a masterpiece. Here we move on to the purpose of Kindred Spirits. The painting was commissioned by New York art collector and merchant Jonathan Sturges. Sturges requested that Durand paint William Cole and Brian, poet and friend to Cole, and Thomas Cole as Kindred Spirits to represent their close friendship. And the idea of kindred spirits was inspired by uh, the English poet John Keats' sonnet to solitude. The painting was then gifted to Bryant when it was finished. And Durand referenced his own friendship with Cole in it, and also displayed his mastery of this genre of the painting. He represented all three men's connection to nature and their belief of the divine within nature, also known as transcendentalism. The Formal Elements It was an oil painting on canvas. It was 44 inches tall by 36 inches wide. Uh, it had a vertical format used the, uh, the concept of chiaroscuro, was transcendental, realistic, and idealistic. As a nod to Thomas Cole, Durand incorporated aspects of his comrade's style in the painting. For instance, in the foreground, note the blasted trees toward the left of the foreground. These look very similar to Cole's trees in his view from Mount Holyoke, Northampton, Massachusetts after a thunderstorm, the Oxbow, which are usually indicative of his own work, not Durand's. This was symbolic of his respect for his great friend Thomas Cole and his profound accomplishments. However, Durand's own natural style penetrated through his attempt at Cole-esque style. Typical of Durand is the great attention to small details, notably the intricacy in the tree bark, leaves, crevices in the rocks, and the tone of the water. In the middle ground, Durand paints William Cole and Brian, left, and Thomas Cole, right, standing on a large piece of rock that is jutting out, overlooking the beautiful landscape. Durand's use of chiaroscuro allowed the viewer to differentiate the middle ground from the background easily due to the amount of contrasting light. Also, Durand brilliantly uses linear perspective to portray how the vast mountains are in comparison to Cole and Bryant, despite the fact that they are only painted smaller than the mountains in the background. His color palette consists of very earthy colors, displaying his realistic yet awe-inspiring approach to painting nature, the staple of transcendentalism. Bryant is holding his hat and walking stick, while Cole carries a sketchbook in his left hand and recorder in his right, which is pointing out towards the landscape, very symbolic of the friendship between Cole and Durand, for both men shared a love for music as well as painting. Durand actually referred to their friendship as a C major D flat. C for Cole, D for Durand. The recorder on the right hand of Cole symbolically represents his old saying of Durand's and provided an outlet for Durand to include his friendship with Cole in a painting meant for William Cole and Brian, as depicted here. Also, our textbook claims that Cole is on the right, but however, Asher B. Durand himself is on the left. This is actually a mistake in the book because multiple respectable sources claim that it is indeed Brian in the painting with Cole. Also, it is evident within the painting itself that Brian is the one here with Cole, for their names are carved into the white birch tree on the left, depicted here. You can see Brian's name on the top and Cole's on the bottom. In the forefront of the background, 
we see a small waterfall called Fawn's Leap, and above and slightly to the right lies Catterskill Falls. This marked a turning point in Duran's career, for in the real world, you cannot see Fawn's Leap and Catterskill Falls from the same position. This meant that Duran, a former strict realist, had adopted the use of re idealism, a style used by Cole frequently. By mashing these two landmarks together, Durand was acknowledging the two most famous places Thomas Cole had explored, a sign of respect for his dear friend. In the far background, Durand painted the beautiful Catskill Mountains of New York in the, top, in the typical style of the Hudson River School, real yet awe-inspiring. This is Sam Chula. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.